We're Team 22006, the slide label applicator for simplified handling, sponsored by Roche. I'm Randy. I'm one of the systems engineers on this project. This is Zelia. She is the other systems engineer on this project. This is Sarah. She's our biomedical engineer. This is Cole. He is our mechanical engineer. This is Aaron. He is one of our ECE engineers. And this is Muhammad, our other ECE engineer. This is our design day poster. And throughout this video, we'll be discussing our project background as well as our finalized product. So to give you a little background, Roche makes medical devices that help identify disease and diagnose patients. If you have a biopsy done, your tissue sample gets sent to the lab where it's embedded in paraffin wax, cut into incredibly thin slices, placed on microscope slides, and stained with different chemicals. Each of these slides needs to be labeled with patient identifiers and a barcode that tells the automated equipment what stains to use and which processes to carry carry out. Currently, lab workers are manually applying these labels. This process is tedious and timely and can lead to fatigue, reduced accuracy, and productivity, as well as repetitive motion injuries such as carpal tunnel. The goal of this project was to design an automated labeling system which can quickly and accurately apply the labels to slides containing tissue samples. In doing so, the system could potentially save Roche lab operators up to six and a half hours a day while providing more consistency, accurate and prevent fatigue from repetitive task work. Some of our main requirements for this project were to place the label on the slide within 10 seconds. We also needed to make sure the labels were placed accurately within the frosted section of the slide, as you can see to the image on the right. This means the label edges could be no more than a half a millimeter from the edges of the frosted section, with no overhang and no air pockets underneath the label. The applicator must also fit within the size requirements that allow it to be placed on a lab bench top, and most importantly, don't damage the slide or the tissue sample. Our design concept for this project is that a lab worker could input a ribbon of labels into the system, insert a slide, and the system will label the slide. The label ribbon would be accepted by our system, and using custom cut channels on each side, a conveyor belt in the middle, and rollers above, escort the label ribbon around an edge, at which point the label would be released from the backing paper and placed on a slide, while the remaining backing paper continues running through the channels and is deposited to the rear of the system. The labels are detected by a laser which triggers the stepper motors that drive the conveyor to pause while waiting for an input slide. When a slide is input, it pushes a limit switch which triggers the conveyor to move forward one step and label one slide. Here is a quick video demonstration of how this system looks in action. We can see that the label backing is pulled through the system. The label is then ejected while the backing paper is pulled through the system. The label is then pulled off of the backing directly onto the slide. This design was made almost entirely in solid work. If we take a look at the image in the top left, you can see our channel side piece it features an overhang of about a millimeter or two, which restricts that border on the label backing tape. In the top right, you can see those secondary rollers, which pull the label off of the backing paper and guide it onto the slide in a consistent location. In the bottom right, you can see two stepper motors, one driving the primary rollers and conveyor belt, and another driving the secondary rollers to apply the label directly onto the slide. If we look at the bottom left corner, we can see that the label applicator subassembly is mounted at an angle within our system, such that the user can insert a slide horizontally. This allows easier use and prevents any tissue sample from falling off of the slide. As for our housing and final assembly, we chose to make it out of laser cut plywood as our prototype. As for our software, we had a lot of components integrate together, and our machine has a lot of states in which certain actions need to be performed, so therefore we chose to model our software on a state machine. Our initial state is waiting for the user to press the blue button to start the machine. Once they've pressed that, we're going to intake labels. At this point, we'll be running our stepper motors to intake labels into the machine. Once the labels are in position, we have a label sensor that will detect them, and once it detects them, we will wait for the user to push a slide into the machine and activate a limit switch. Once they do this, we'll apply a label and then go back to our initial state. And as for our electrical system, we have two stepper motors, an Arduino Uno with a CNC shield to run these. We have a button. We have an LCD, two custom PCBs for the label sensors. One of them has a photo transistor on them and one of them has a light source. These are pointed directly at each other. So as soon as the photo transistor is not able to receive the light from the light source, we know a label is in position. Um, we have a custom power distribution board. So it's simply one 
5 volt in to many 5 volt out, same with ground. Um, we also have a limit switch, which will help us detect when a slide is in the machine. As for our power system, we have a buck converter that will help us power the Arduino. This can downstep our 12 volt input to 5 volt output. We have a 12 volt power supply, which will provide us ample current to that stepper shield, as well as to the buck converter to help power our Arduino. We have an e-stop button for if there's ever an emergency, such as labels jamming in the machine. And we have a standard power switch right there to turn the machine on and off. We have a schematic for the electrical assembly as follows. We have the 12 volt power supply, and then we have a power socket with two cords. And after the emergency shutoff switch for the butt converter, and then from the on and off switch, we have the Arduino with the shield buttons, the stepper motors, and also the display and a photo transistor. We also have the wireless to address where they're gonna be connected. Due to unforeseen difficulties in the assembly process, the slash system has yet to undergo final acceptance tests. However, these tests are planned and will be completed before design day. The first test will be the application accuracy. 20 slides will be labeled using the slash system and the label placement will be measured from the edges of the slide to ensure they are within the half millimeter requirement. Additionally, the application rate will be tested. 20 slides will be labeled using our system and in order for a pass, the system must apply the label in under 10 seconds per slide. Finally, the system operational temperature will be tested the slash system will be powered on and run for 20 minutes. Temperatures will be taken at each minute to ensure that the internal temperature does not exceed 47 degrees Celsius. In summary, the slash system consists of rollers, conveyor belt channel pieces, secondary rollers, a limit switch, a label sensor, and our software system. In conclusion, we found that it was extremely difficult to separate the label from the vacuum with a short strip of labels. If we could use an entire roll, this would be a much easier process. We advise that CNC machine parts be used as they have higher tolerances. Our 3D printed parts are less precise and less predictable. Additionally, we advise that the external housing be made out of something other than plywood as it is flammable and not lab safe. Acrylic is a good alternative. Throughout this project, we had a few problems and surprises. FedEx lost our gears, which delayed our assembly. Um, we had a complete redesign following PDR. We had a new team member join us for the second semester. And as mentioned, we had issues with the small tolerances within our small scale machine. We learned a lot throughout this process. We learned that scope creep is very real and it's difficult to resist overcomplicating a design, especially when you're excited about it. This is where we started and what led us to a redesign after PDR. We also learned just how important organization and time management are. It feels like there's never enough time to make your perfect design, but if you organize a team well and everyone uses their time wisely, you can create something amazing. We also wish we would have prototyped earlier and more frequently to mitigate design challenges towards the end of the project. And we all learned how important team communication is. We would like to thank V Wynn and her team for providing Team Slash with an amazing support system. We would also like to thank Roche for the opportunity to work on this solution. We would like to thank our fantastic mentor, Steve Larimore. And we also want to give a shout out to Mr. Ong for a fun bonding experience.